We continue today with chapter 2, The Meaning of the Last Judgment. One of the ways in which you can correct the magic miracle confusion is to remember that you did not create yourself. You are apt to forget this when you become egocentric and this puts you in a position where belief in magic is virtually inevitable. Your will to create was given you by your Creator, who was expressing the same will in His creation. Since creative ability rests in the mind, everything you create is necessarily a matter of will. It also follows that whatever you alone make is real in your own sight, though not in the mind of God. This basic distinction leads directly into the real meaning of the Last Judgment. The Last Judgment is one of the most threatening ideas in your thinking. This is because you do not understand it. Judgment is not an attribute of God. It was brought into being only after the separation when it became one of the many learning devices to be built in to the overall plan. Just as the separation occurred over millions of years, the Last Judgment will extend over a similarly long period, and perhaps an even longer one. Its length, however, can be greatly shortened by miracles, the device for shortening but not abolishing time. If a sufficient number become truly miracle-minded, this shortening process can be virtually immeasurable. It is essential, however, that you free yourself quickly, because you must emerge from the conflict if you are to bring peace to other minds. The Last Judgment is generally thought of as a procedure undertaken by God. Actually, it will be undertaken by my brothers with my help. It is a final healing, rather than a meeting out of punishment, however much you may think that punishment is deserved. Punishment is a concept totally opposed to right-mindedness, and the aim of the Last Judgment is to restore right-mindedness to you. The Last Judgment might be called a process of right evaluation, it simply means that everyone will finally come to understand what is worthy and what is not. After this, the ability to choose can be directed rationally. Until this distinction is made, however, the vacillations between free and imprisoned will cannot but continue. The first step toward freedom involves a sorting out of the false from the true. This is a process of separation in the constructive sense and reflects the true meaning of the apocalypse. Everyone will ultimately look upon his own creations and choose to preserve only what is good, just as God himself looked upon what he had created and knew that it was good. At this point the mind can begin to look with love on its own creations because of their worthiness. At the same time, the mind will inevitably disown its miscreations, which, without belief, will no longer exist. The term, Last Judgment, is frightening not only because it has been projected onto God, but also because of the association of, quote, last with death. This is an outstanding example of upside-down perception. If the meaning of the Last Judgment is objectively examined, it is quite apparent that it is really the doorway to life. No one who lives in fear is really alive. Your own Last Judgment cannot be directed toward yourself, because you are not your own creation. You can, however, apply it meaningfully and at any time to everything you have made, and retain in your memory only what is creative 
and good. This is what your right-mindedness cannot but dictate. The purpose of time is solely to, quote, give you time to achieve this judgment. It is your own perfect judgment of your own perfect creations. When everything you retain is lovable, there is no reason for fear to remain with you. This is your part in the atonement. And from the workbook. Lesson number 15. My thoughts are images that I have made. It is because the thoughts you think you think appear as images that you do not recognize them as nothing. You think you think them, and so you think you see them. This is how your, quote, seeing was made. This is the function you have given your body's eyes. It is not seeing. It is image making. It takes the place of seeing replacing vision with illusions. This introductory idea to the process of image making that you call seeing will not have much meaning for you. You will begin to understand it when you have seen little edges of light around the same familiar objects which you see now. That is the beginning of real vision. You can be certain that real vision will come quickly when this has occurred. As we go along, you may have many, quote, light episodes. They may take many different forms, some of them quite unexpected. Do not be afraid of them. They are signs that you are opening your eyes at last. They will not persist, because they merely symbolize true perception, and they are not related to knowledge. These exercises will not reveal knowledge to you, but they will prepare the way to it. In practicing the idea for today, repeat it first to yourself, and then apply it to whatever you see around you using its name and letting your eyes rest on it as you say, This blank is an image that I have made. That blank is an image that I have made. It is not necessary to include a large number of specific subjects for the application of today's idea. It is necessary, however, to continue to look at each subject while you repeat the idea to yourself. The idea should be repeated quite slowly each time. Although you will obviously not be able to apply the idea to very many things during the minute or so of practice that is recommended, Try to make the selection as random as possible. Less than a minute will do for the practice periods if you begin to feel uneasy. Do not have more than three application periods for today's idea unless you feel completely comfortable with it, and do not exceed four. However, the idea can be applied as needed throughout the day. My thoughts are images that I have made. So today we have another key revealed to us. 
this key is the ingenuity of the deception of this world. We are now getting a peek under the veil that was made to cover the light, the experience of identity as Christ. And I say ingenious because this is quite a magic trick. That thoughts appear as images is the reason why they are not recognized as nothing. And so we've been told by Jesus, you think you think them, and so you think you see them. He says this is how your, quote, seeing was made. So we see that the hallucination is false thoughts or fictitious thoughts appearing as images, as if they are actual images. And this image making is the function that has been given to the body's eyes. But even the body is just a thought, appearing as an image, as well as all the images that seem to surround the body in the linear time-space cosmos. So this is a rather strange idea at first. It needs to be taken in a bit. Because there's a convincing job that has to occur. The Holy Spirit has to convince the sleeping mind that it is thinking thoughts that have no existence whatsoever and perceiving images that have no existence whatsoever. And that this entire image-making mechanism is simply a cover over real vision, abstract light, the great rays of God and Christ. And we're given a hint of what's to come. Light episodes, where he says, do not be afraid of them. They are signs that you are opening your eyes at last. I recall my first revelatory experience where the seeming figure ground of the world collapsed and this blazing light, not of this world, seemed to stream through to me, as me, as everything, until what seemed to be images just faded and the light overtook the images and then there was only light. And it was a sense of being everything and knowing everything, a sense of having no questions, a sense of pure love that had no end. The end, the very end of everything. And so, there was a couple other revelations that occurred after that that started off the same with open-eyed meditation, or we call it eye-gazing, 
in deep stillness. And today, we take a step in opening our hearts, in opening our mind to this amazing light. And we begin to allow ourselves to be convinced, shown, the light of truth. This idea for the day is, you could say, the, the beginning of a prayer. to have God reveal the truth of our very being to our mind. That we may come to know our identity as an idea, a perfect idea in the mind of God. A Christ idea. Not an image, not male or female, not masculine or feminine, not this or that, not yin or yang, but a perfect idea in the mind of God. And so today, we devote each moment that we can recall the lesson for today is a practice in preparing our mind for the vision of Christ. My thoughts are images that I have made. 